you are the architect of your mind. Your mind is malleable, your mind is bendable, your mind is neuroplastic. And that means that your mind can morph into something that is of your benefit, or it can morph into something that can be a hindrance for your growth. You have the choice. Do you want to use your mind as a tool to enlightenment and to peace and to health? Or do you want your brain to be an obstacle that makes it nearly impossible for your dreams to come true? A lot of self-esteem comes from our mind. How we feel really impacts our self-esteem. And sometimes it's, oh, our self-esteem impacts how we feel. But a lot of the time, the neurochemicals actually impact how we behave and how we end up showing up in the world. So there are many building blocks that I want to speak on about rebuilding your brain. And with the right tools, you can truly make a palace. You can make a, cath a cathedral of your brain, a place where consciousness light can be fully realized. And it's not just through meditation, but it is through some other surprising things. And I am learning a lot right now as I experience life and do research. But I want to say that I am not a doctor and I have a lot to learn. But these things are backed up by science, these things that I will be speaking on. And I do plan on going back to school actually to study the brain more. So the first point that I want to bring up in this video is that your mind is made up of 60% fat. 60% of your mind is made up of fat. If you do not have enough fat in your diet, your mind will pay the price, truly. So a lot of times fat is demonized in the United States and in, even in other countries now. And people end up eating excess carbs and protein and then they lower their fat. And this can cause um, neurological issues and hormonal issues, um, which can be more apparent in women because our hormones are changing constantly. So the ratio of fats, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be 3 to 1, omega 6 to omega 3, or 4 to 1, somewhere along those lines. And obviously the types of fats that you have in your diet truly can impact this. Um, some healthy fats would be an avocado. I just started putting avocados in my smoothies, half of an avocado or a whole one, and that can really boost it up. You can have nut butters, you can have cheese for example like cheese is actually good for neurological health in moderation and fish you can have salmon sardines all of these things can boost your brain health and increasing the fat in your mind can increase the gray matter in your mind and increased gray matter scientifically is um, a correlation with enlightenment master meditators they there was this master meditator who was known as the happiest man alive and they did a brain scan on him and he had the highest gray matter and if you have more fats in your diet especially healthy fats you will have more gray matter in your brain so besides meditation this is a tool that you can use and obviously with the right ratios but um, it's easy to accidentally disregard a core element of nutrition in your diet because most people are pretty consistent with what they eat and if you're consistently eating um, an incomplete diet, it may be hard to realize what is missing. So the next point I want to bring up in this video has to do with calcium. I talked about this in another video. It is very difficult to get adequate calcium if you are avoiding dairy in your diet. Calcium actually is the forefront of something that regulates your nervous system and the building blocks for your body. And actually, um, a if you have very low calcium, that can actually lead to psychosis. So increasing calcium helps tremendously. And for example, I started drinking lactose-free milk. You can do plant milk milks, but it's harder to absorb the calcium inside of plant milk because that is calcium carbonate and it is they um, add artificial nutrients in there and it's not just, it's, it's not the whole food. But if you cannot have that source of calcium, 
You can also have kale, sardines, you could have cheese, white beans are another source, and tofu is another great source. As long as you're getting, depends on your age range, 800 to 1,000 milligrams of calcium a day, which most people are not actually getting that amount. So that is higher calcium or an adequate amount of calcium is also associated with a higher amount of gray matter in your brain. The third point I'm bringing up here is something beyond diet and that is meditation. Meditation and self-awareness and introspection and focus, focusing your attention on one point, one it's basically a one-pointed mind is this concept where you can meditate on one point for a prolonged period of time to basically silence the mind and become aware of the thoughts so your mind can calm down. And meditation regulates your nervous system and can allow you to be in a calmer state. My next point that I have to bring up here is another nutritional tip and this is caffeine and different types of teas. So caffeine is actually shown to prevent dementia and Alzheimer's and the healthiest form of caffeine is probably from teas. For example, green tea has a compound called L-theanine and L-theanine is also very neuroprotective. So green tea, for example, has been shown to cause a regrowth of neurons in the brain and this can also lead to an increased amount of gray matter in the brain, also associated with master meditators. A lot of people in meditation in the past and history have actually used green tea in their meditations and tea ceremonies would be held in a meditative way. All right, the next point is mindfulness. This, is, this speaks for itself, just being mindful throughout your day and being present and yeah, basically. And the last concept of this scientific perspective of enlightenment, of a higher amount of gray matter, of the science behind being happy, of nurturing your brain, is this idea of non-duality. Once you have the basic needs covered of giving your brain the fuel that it needs to thrive, you can more easily glimpse non-duality as your gray matter increases you're able to be more regulated your nervous system can be more regulated and then you realize you don't have to be in fight or flight anymore and you can melt into oneness so this is this video these are some things that took me a while to learn and i'm so excited to share those things with you so this is basically all in all the the different pillars of increasing gray matter in your brain and how that can lead to enlightenment so if you want more content like this let me know and yeah this was a more scientific video i'll probably go into more philosophy and other videos but stay tuned and also i'm trying to think what else Oh yeah, I have some eco-friendly merch if you're interested in it. The link is in the description below. And that's it. Peace out.